Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of the shore. For three days they traveled in the desert with, without finding water. When they came to Mara, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Mara. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became fit to drink. There the Lord issued a ruling and instruction for them and put them to the rest. He said, If you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elam, where there were twelve springs and seventy palm trees, and they camped there near the water. The whole Israelites community set out from Elam and came to the desert of the Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt. In the desert, the whole community groaned against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hands in Egypt. And they were set around post and meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to the Moses, I will lay down bread from the heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and uh, that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the uh, evening, you will know that it, it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, you will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the, in the evening and all the bread you wanted in the morning, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses told Aaron, uh, Say to the enti entire Israelite community, Come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert, and there, were, there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am Lord your God. Then evening quail, evening quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of the dew around the camp. Then the dew was gone. A thin flakes like a frost on the ground appear on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread from bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Commanded. Everyone is gathered as much as they needed. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told, some gathered much, some little. And they, and when they measured it by the omer, the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had, had gathered just as much as they needed. Then Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. Uh, they kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. 
each morning everyone gathered as much as they needed and when they when the sun grow, grew hot it melted away on sixth day they gathered twice as much two omers for each person the leader of the communities came to report it, this to moses he said to them this is what the lord commanded tomorrow is the is to be a day of sabbath rest a holy sabbath to the lord so bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil. Save whatever is left to keep it until morning. So they save it until morning as Moses commanded. And it did not stink or get maggot in it. Eat it today, Moses said, because today is the Sabbath to the Lord. You will not find any, any of it on the ground today. Six days you are to gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will not be any. Nevertheless, some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather it, but they found none. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commands and my instructions? Keep in mind that the Lord has given you the Sabbath. That is why on the sixth day he gives you bread for two days. Everyone is to stay where they are on the seventh day. No one is go. Uh, no one is to go out. So the people rested on the Sabbath day. The people in Israel called the bread manna. It was white like a col coriander seed and tasted like a wafer made with honey. Moses said, this is what the Lord has commanded. Take an, take an omer of manna and keep it for the generation to come so they can see the bread I gave you to eat. In the wilderness when i brought you out of egypt so moses said to aaron take a jar and put an omer of the manna in it then place it before the lord to keep it the generation to come as the lord commanded moses aaron put the manna with the tab tablet of the covenant law so that it might be pre preserved uh, the, the israelites ate manna 40 years until they came to the land that was settled. Uh, they, uh, they ate manna until they reached the border of the Canaan. The title of my message is Wilderness Training. Key verse, chapter 16, verse 4. When God brought the Israelites out of Egypt, He did not take them straight to Canaan, the promised land. He led them through wilderness. And they had a very tough time there. So why didn't God let, lead the Israelites to the promised land immediately? It is the same reason why God does not take us to heaven immediately after we are saved through Jesus Christ. Our experience on earth is like a wilderness. So the answer is that wilderness is God's school. You learn how to follow God's instructions in the wilderness. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 8 says, Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep His commands. So if you follow God's instructions, things work out well. But if you follow your own thinking, things go badly. It is very hard, hard lesson to learn. So there are three things you learn about God and three things you learn about yourselves. You learn in the school of wilderness what God is really like and what you are really like. So learn how wonderful God is and how dreadful you are. So first, things you learn about God. You learn, first of all, that God is there with you. God is always there with you in your happiness and in your disappointments. Second of all, He protects you from enemies and diseases. And thirdly, He provides everything you need just at the right time. And second, you learn about, about yourselves. So first of all, you are frail. You are very weak. In the wilderness, you are at the end of your resources. And next, you'll discover your flesh, your sinful nature. 
then you learn about your faithlessness. Even though God helps you again and again, you still doubt whether He's going to help you. You still complain. You still grumble. So we need to learn how faithless we are and how faithful God is. So that's the purpose of wilderness training. You have to discover how low you are in order to appreciate how high God is. So even though Israelites grumbled, God hardly rebuked them. God helped them. And God's patience is amazing. So in this passage, we will look at some of the incidents to illustrate these points. So remember last week, we learned that the Lord has led the Israelites to encamp by the Red Sea at Pi Hiroth, you know, to entice Pharaoh and his army to pursue them. The Israelites were terrified when they saw the Egyptian chariots approaching. Moses, however, told the people to be still and see the deliverance the Lord would bring about for them. Then the Lord opened a way across the Red Sea so that the Israelites could pass through the sea as on dry, dry ground. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were all drowned. Then Moses and Miriam led the Israelites to celebrate this great victory. Moses wanted God's people to take this great victory to heart. The Lord who had defeated the Egyptians would lead the God's people safely past all the enemies and plant them in the promised land. This is the hope of everyone who has made the exodus, exodus out under, from under the power of sin and death by faith in Jesus, the Lamb of God. But the promise of a glorious future in the Lord did not solve many practical problems the Israelites faced in the wilderness. These problems were not abstract. They were real. So look at chapter 15, 22 to 24. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Mara, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Mara. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we to drink? So they passed the Red Sea at the Straits of Tiran. And then they traveled for three days the wilderness of shore without finding water. So this was a pending disaster for such a large crowd, two million people. And then when the Moses led them to a place that had water at Mara, they found that the water was too bitter to drink. What a disappointment. You know, they could bear their thirst, but they could not bear the thought that they were being led into the desert by someone who might not know where he was going. So that's why they grumbled against Moses. Of course, the Moses was not leading the people according to his own idea. He has been led by God. But still they grumbled against Moses. So look at verse 1525a. Then Moses cried out to the Lord. The Lord showed him a piece of wood and he threw it into the water and the water became sweet. You know, when Moses journeyed from Midian to Egypt, he had with him his family, his wife Zipporah and his two sons. Now, less than a year later, Moses was responsible for the welfare of two million people and their livestock. He had witnessed the awesome power of God that had brought the superpower nation of Egypt to his knees. But he was very hard pressed to keep his eyes fixed on God instead of on the demanding and helpless crowd of the Israelites. So he cried out to God in his need and God answered him by opening his eyes to find a piece of wood that made the bitter springs of Mara become sweet. It was a miracle. At the same time, it was a test for Moses and the Israelites. From now on, they were going to be traveling through unfamiliar territory. 
they could not rely on their common sense. They couldn't afford to hold on to their fears and anxieties. What could they depend on in this time of great testing and great uncertainty? It was God's promise. Look at verse 26. If you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who healed you. The interesting thing is that at Mara, God revealed himself a new name. I am the Lord who healed you. So if you read the Bible, if it's Exodus or Numbers, you'll notice that as they go through wilderness, at the place where everything was fine, God did not reveal himself newly. But at a dis disappointing place, at a difficult place, at a better place, they learn more about God. So if your Christian life has been easy and smooth, probably you will not know much about God at all. You will not know any many names of God. But when you are in trouble, when you are bitterly disappointed, when you are going through difficulty, it is when you discover more about God. So God promised, do not be afraid of drinking bad water. I will keep you from all the diseases. So then the Lord led them to Elim, where there were 12 springs and 70 palm trees. If the Israelites were to survive their journey, they would have to learn to trust in God's word. If they keep God's commands and decrees, not only would God save them from disaster, but he would heal them. This is the promise of God to every generation of his people. It is the obedience to God's word that heals us and makes us to be holy people. But notice that they did not learn anything new about God at Elim, even though things were great. So likewise, if you stay at Elim, a comfortable place, you, you will not learn anything new about God your spiritual life would be stagnant, possibly. So the obedience God was looking for from his people was not abstract or conceptual, but very practical. As the Israelites traveled through the desert on the way to the mountain of God at Mount Sinai, they continued to be tested at the level of their basic human needs. So look at chapter 16, 1 through 3. The whole Israelite community set off from Elim and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai. On the 15th day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. For you have brought us out into the de into desert to starve this entire assembly to death. So now the Israelites had been traveling for a month and surviving on the food they had brought with them from Egypt. Their food was now gone. Again, they faced the prospect of a journey through an unknown place of desert, not having any idea of what do they eat from day to day. Remember, they are not starving at this point. But the idea that they would starve scared them greatly. They longed for the certainty they had in Egypt. Even though they had a very hard labor, at least the Egyptians gave them free food. You know, they only remember the, the free food they had, but they, don't, they didn't remember the harsh labor. That's the slave mentality. So how could God set them free from their slave mentality and help them to win the victory in any circumstances? So God had a plan to use their time in the wilderness to teach them to depend on God's promises for their survival. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day 
In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in. There is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Lord had in mind to feed these people bread from heaven. Not just one day, but 40 years. God's provision from heaven would be enough for each day. God's provision would be double on the day before the Sabbath, so that his people might rest in God on the Sabbath. This provision was God's miraculous care and mercy for his people that would sustain them throughout their journey. At the same time, this was a God's way of testing and training his people to obey fully his commands so that they might be healed of their slave mentality and grow as a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, as God will reveal in chapter 19. So let's learn two things through this daily bread training. First, God wanted to train his people to come to him daily for their needs. Look at chapter 16, 13b through 15. In the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes of like a frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. I mean, that's the artist rendering of manna, thin layer of a frost. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. Just as the Lord promised, he sent the bread for his people to eat in the morning. People called it manna because they did not know what it was. So manna means literally, what is it? It looked like a coriander seed, and when they ate it, it tasted like wafers made with honey. The Lord commanded them to gather three pounds of manna each day for each person. Homer is a three pounds, 1.4 kilogram. For, is for one person's portion for one day. They had to gather it in the morning before the desert sun caused it to melt away. So if you get up late in the morning, there will be none. You have to fast that day unintentionally. If gathered it in obedience to God's command, they needed to worry if they had enough. Each person gathered as much as he needed. But if someone calculated that they would gather more for an extra day, or I had to gather for tomorrow, whatever they didn't need that day became rotten and full of maggots. Then Moses became angry because of their disobedience. So in this way, the Israelites learned to depend on the Lord for their daily bread, day by day. So they should not gather for the tomorrow's bread. They gather just they need for that day. Second, God wanted to train his people to rest in him. Look at chapter 16, 22 through 26. On the sixth day, they gather twice as much. This is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow is to be a day of rest, holy Sabbath to the Lord. So bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil. Save whatever is left and keep it until morning. So they saved it until morning as the Moses commanded. And it did not stink or get maggots in it. Eat it today, Moses said, because today is a Sabbath to the Lord. You will not find any of it on the ground today. Six days you have to gather it. But on the seventh days, the Sabbath, there will not be any. So one day in seven, the Lord called his, on his people to rest from their labor and devote themselves to God. It was a reminder that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So God's provision for the Sabbath day was miraculous. Remember, in other days, the leftover manna became rotten and had a full of maggots in it. But the leftover manna on the Sabbath day did not spoil or rot when kept for the Sabbath. That's not how nature works. You know, chicken, they lay their egg all, every day. They, don't, they do not rest on the Sabbath. 
In this way, the Lord assured his people that his provision was not just for the sake of their bodies, but to strengthen them in their spirit. Once again, some of the people paid no attention to the Lord's commands and went out to gather manna on the Sabbath, they, but they found none. So Sabbath was a sign separating the Israelites from all the other nations. So that's why later God said in Exodus chapter 31, you must observe my Sabbath. This will be a sign between me and you for the generations to come, that so that you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. The people were to rest, trusting that God's provision was enough. You know, today we are living in a very fast-paced and highly competitive world. So we feel like we have to do something. I feel like I have to do, go out to my office and do research. Otherwise, I will, feel bo- I will fall behind. There are no, no end to the things we should do. But as God's people living by faith in God's provision, we can have peace knowing that God provides according to our needs and in a way that helps us to depend on Him more and more. God provides what we need, not always what we want, but He always provides what we need. Praise God. May God help, help us to trust in God for our daily bread. The Israelites then moved on from the desert of sin and encamped at Rephidim. And there was no water. So Moses and Israelites quarreled. And apparently Israelites were testing God, saying, is the Lord among us or not? And Moses was growing restless and frustrated because of the people's stubborn refusal to believe. People on the other end was growing restless because of the constant struggle just to survive. They were almost ready to stone Moses. People tempted God. They were testing God. They were pushing God. So Moses called the place Masa, meaning testing. So Moses cried out to the Lord again. And God instructed Moses to lead some of the elders out to Horeb. There he was to strike a rock and Moses, would, the Lord would provide water for the people. It must have seemed to Moses that the Israelites had learned nothing from their journey thus far. Should the Israelites have trusted in God to provide them water in the desert as he had up until then? Of course they should have trusted. But God was concerned for his servant Moses. He should not fall into the sin of anger and unbelief. And in fact, if you read the numbers, actually in numbers, we have a same situation it happened many years later. This time Moses was so exasperated. And God actually told Moses to speak to the rock, not strike. But Moses so exasperated that he struck the rock out of anger. And water came out. But then God said to Moses, you did not honor me in, in front of the people. You lose the privilege of going to the promised land. So Moses lost the privilege. And God was concerned here that Moses would commit the sin of anger and unbelief. So that's why here in this passage, God helped Moses to begin to focus on raising up leaders for the people who would help him shepherding them. So that's why God uh, had Moses to go with the elders to the rock. Uh, some distance away from the camp to the Mount Sinai. And there he struck the rock in in their presence. So it was to help the elders to grow in faith, to influence their people to believe as well. So God uh, raising the leaders to help Moses to carry the burden. Then the Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites. Joshua was assigned the task of leading the Israelites to battle against them. So Moses and Aaron and Hur went up on the hill to pray. Things didn't look good for the Israelites against the more experienced fighter, the Amalekites. But when Moses prayed, holding up his hands to heaven, things quickly turned turned in Israel's favor. 
Moses was happy but tired, so he let down his hands. Then the Israelites began suffering heavy losses. So Moses, so Aaron and her got a rock so that Moses could sit. And they stood beside him, held incense up, incense up, one on one side and the other one on the other. So with this kind of quirking, God gave Israel, Israel the victory over the Amalekites. When the battle was won, they learned more about God. The Lord is my banner. Jehovah Nisi in Hebrew. It means God is my victory. The Amalekites represents the flesh, our sinful nature. It is never removed from the believers until we die. We have to battle with the sinful nature until we die. There are two things we can do to triumph over our sinful nature. Prayer and the word of God. May God give you the victory over your sinful nature. So in conclusion, as you go through the wilderness training, may God bless you to learn God's faithfulness and His grace more and more. And you'll discover your own faithlessness. That's normal. That's natural. You have to discover how low you are to learn how high God is, how faithful God is, how good God is, so that you'll appreciate God's grace more and more.